hey guys and welcome to today's video so today's video is going to be a collective perfume haul so if you guys saw my last video my perfume declutter you know that i am really excited about exploring new releases so i do have quite a few new releases so i have a couple discovery sets to go over and then i'm gonna go into a few like 2019 2020 releases and then my 2021s and then there are a couple that got lost in transit so there are two more 2021s that got lost so i am going to be doing a smaller uh, perfume haul a couple weeks from now so most of these i have spent some time with i have initial thoughts but then i do want to do like a this or that kind of perfume series where I talk about two or three of them at a time. I like videos where people talk about several perfumes and not just one, but that's me personally. So I'll probably do like two or three in a video where I will discuss the pillar and the flanker because I'm noticing that a lot more new releases are flankers. So that was a very long and winded intro, but let's go ahead and get into the video. Let's go over a couple of uh, discovery sets. I did pick up this discovery set from Clean Reserve. When Karen here on YouTube sent me Radiant Nectar for my birthday. Thank you again, Karen. I absolutely love that perfume. Beautiful spring scent. I knew I wanted to try more from this house. Now, I did learn that they have like their Clean Reserve line and their Clean Classic. So this is the Clean Reserve and there are differences well anyways i do want to go through this house in more detail because i did pick up one of their clean classic skins which is beautiful i just went and grabbed it but i did recently pick up their clean skin rebecca in my comments had mentioned it and i think she mentioned the reserve but i ended up seeing this on like on clearance at kohl's for like 16 bucks or something and then i had kohl's cash so I didn't pay anything for this, but this is beautiful. This is if you do not want to smell like you have perfume, but you want to smell clean, this, this right here is what to get. Like on days when I know I do not want to smell like I have perfume on, but I want to smell like if when someone walks by me, they're going to be like, damn, did she just hop out of the shower? This is like your skin, but better. Gorgeous. So I'm really excited to try the Reserve of this and kind of compare them so i will be going over this house in more details at a later date okay and then i did pick up alexandria and i kind of mentioned this in my coconuts video i had gotten alts inspiration to creed's virgin island water and it was close but i needed something closer because i fell in love with creed's virgin island water but it's very expensive and it's a scent that because I wouldn't want to wear it all the time. I didn't know if I wanted to invest in it just yet. So I did pick up the Alexandria version. Clone. <laughs> you guys, this is a clone, but stronger. So the performance on this is insane. I cannot wait to wear this to the beach. This is like a total beach vacation. But this is Hawaii Volcano. And this is the extra de Pafa. So if you do not want to spend your coins on creed's virgin island water because that one's pricey i would say this one and if you don't want to spend because this is like i think 60 bucks if you don't want to spend 60 on this then i would say you can get away with alt alt's just not as close and this one also performs way better i did also pick up this sephora favorites perfume sampler and i picked this up because i already knew that there was a perfume in here that I wanted to get and it was cheaper to get it this way because the perfume retails for I think like 80 or 90 dollars and it was 75 dollars if I got it through here and then they had 10 percent off during Mother's Day so and then you got all these adorable minis and if you guys don't know you'll you'll find out but I do collect minis I I do so it comes with Dylan's turquoise it comes with my way Chloe, Clean Reserve, Warm Cotton, Toka, Florence, Indigo Nest, and Atelier Cologne Lemon Island. It also came with uh, Pat McGrath Mascara, which Pat McGrath is uh, not cheap. 
and I just thought that this was a great deal and I already knew what perfume like I literally went to the guy and was like okay I'm gonna use my voucher and I took it out and I'm like I want this but if you guys can guess which one of these I got go ahead and leave it in the comments below and we'll go through that in a little bit another discovery set that I picked up that I've been wanting for some time that is Christian Dior's private line and I already knew that I wanted to add a couple of these to my collection, but I, I wanted to test them out. I had my eye on Gris Dior, which we'll go over, and I also wanted to try Holy Peony. I was hoping that they would have Feb Delicios, I think it is, but they didn't. I was hoping that I could also get a sample, but they only had a few available, so I picked Sakura, because it wasn't among these. I was able to get a sample free so this came free with my purchase which I thought was really cute and I also got this uh, like Jador set that came with like a Jador mini and a lotion which I gave the lotion to my mom because this is actually her signature scent and I kept the mini just when I want to think of my mom I can, I can smell it. I do want to do a dedicated video on this house next let's go through uh, i think this was released in 2019 but this is chloe nomad the eau de toilette i had talked about the eau de parfum and how much i love that one and one of my subscribers had asked are you talking about the eau de parfum or the eau de toilette and i'm like there is an eau de toilette <laughs> so i went looking for reviews on it the person I finally saw review this one and who gave it a glowing review was Tara Michelle. And I knew once she discussed it that I wanted to eventually add it when I saw a 50 mil on sale. And you guys, I am so happy I did. What I love about Nomad is that Maribel Plum, the Oak Moss, it's a very unique, very crisp, fresh floral. And this smells a lot like the original but it's lighter fresher and there's lychee in here and i absolutely love lychee in my perfume it's absolutely beautiful in the scent and i'm super happy to have both they smell alike but they take two different directions those are my favorite kind of flankers i love when a flanker can keep the dna but they take a star note and it changes it if that makes sense but still keeping it the same. I know that sounds kind of weird, but it's like, I know that this is Nomad, but it goes in a different direction. This is beautiful and super happy to have this one. I am going to be talking about this and the eau de parfum and more details at a later date. I'm going to go over two that I like, but I don't love. And then we'll get into my loves. So first up, this was the flanker that made me realize I love the OG. <laughs> and that is Livre by Yves Saint Laurent. And this is the Eau de Toilette version. And I did get this during the Sephora Rouge sale, so I have spent some time with it, as you can tell. And lovely. Just like the Intense, this is going to be a more likable version. But if you guys saw my declutter video, you know that I like the loud um kind of edgy lavender that a lot of people don't like in the og whereas this is the leaf dna but more fresh and crisp but it smells more played down to me and so does the intense so that is one where in my opinion the original is the masterpiece I know a lot of people don't think that. I feel like they went the ed edgy route and then a, a lot of people didn't like it. So then they went ahead and made a more warm vanilla version and then a fresh summer version. All three are beautiful. I feel like if you like the scent of Leaf, you'll find one that you enjoy. The OG is the one that I enjoy. So I am going to be going into a more in-depth review on all three. Again, that is YSL's Leaf. And this is the Eau de Toilette. Okay, so another like, not love, so I'm really happy that I got the small one, is Kayali's Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper. 
and I love Kaoli perfumes. I have 100 ml of Elixir and 100 ml of Deja Vu, but this one unfortunately didn't didn't work out for me. Now, my mind can change, but I don't think so. First of all, when I got this perfume, I sprayed it and I, and I did like it. Like I sprayed it, I'm like, oh, this reminds me of a more wearable Oud Bouquet. And I love Oud Bouquet, but I can really only wear that perfume in winter. And you guys know, I don't have a lot of winters but it's unique it's something i don't have in my collection and therefore i'm not ready to let it go but this almost had me letting it go i'm like oh this smells like a more wearable one it falls in that same family as Montserrat's roses vanille and florence and it smells like nina ricci's rose absolute It does the same thing in Rose's Vanille. There's a, a sugar note in here that comes off very synthetic on my skin. So where I really enjoyed the opening, I like spicy, so I enjoyed that pink pepper opening. Very sweet, kind of oud scent, even though oud isn't listed. When it dried down, it started to get very sweet and the, the sugary note smelled like fake synthetic sugar. So unfortunately, this one didn't work out for me. Now, I am gonna try layering it. Spicy Looks talked about this perfume. Her review was great. Um, I think this, a lot of people like Mancera's Roses Vanille and that style of perfume, so this is definitely one you don't wanna write off. I would suggest getting a small bottle. That's what I did and I'm happy. Uh, I do wanna layer it. She layered it with Elixir and some of the other ones. I have a bunch of minis. I, I pretty much have all of her minis, so I am gonna layer it. I'm really excited to try it with Elixir 11. But yeah, it, the sweet gets too synthetically sweet on my skin and I don't love it, which is a shame because I almost bought the big boy of this one. When I so I, I know some people don't like that pink bottle, but I love some, I like all kinds of bottles. I like simple bottles, I like gaudy bottles. And when I saw that one, I just the, uh, just the pink girliness came out in me for that one. So I almost bought it. But then when I looked at the notes, I'm like, mm, uh, don't buy it. It might not be your kind of scent. You've been chasing that kind of scent. So I did go ahead and get the small one. And yeah, it's, it's definitely not a love. It's a like. So now we're gonna get into the perfume that I ended up picking up from here. I got the 50 ml of Versace. And here's what the box looks like. Here's the bottle. I do want to compare this to the original because you guys know I really, really enjoy the original. I got this perfume because of Amy Glam. The way she described this perfume with the guava note made me want to get it. And I had told her in her video, oh, you keep making me want that perfume. And she said, I think you'll like it because you know, you like fresh scents. So I will say that I enjoy the, the opening more than the dry down, but that opening, because you get the, the burst of citrus and you do get the guava note. Even though it's in the mid, you do get it. And I would say it stays on my skin for the first few hours. And this projects really well. It's very refreshing. But then on my skin, that guava note does kind of disappear. And it's the note that I love about this perfume. And it's very musky. So that's, a, that's another thing. This opens up very fresh with like lemon and guava. And then it dries down to more of like a musky kind of citrus scent. So the dry down is not bad, just a little boring. Uh, a little bit more modern um, than I would say light blue because light blue, you know, has been around. And this guava note makes it a little bit more interesting but I will go over this one in more detail. Another one I'm excited to talk about, and that is the Valentino, Donna, and Umo. And this is their Born in Roma Yellow Dream. The woman's is the Eau de Parfum, 
and the men's is the eau de toilette and i will be discussing these in more detail but i absolutely love the line i got this for dennis for father's day that's why i opened it like this oh but this is good i will say that i don't really get the pineapple in this one like i thought i would but this is a really good scent and i'll, I'll go over this one in more detail because i am going to be talking about this one uh, the woman's version and then I will be talking about Born in Roma which I have. This has the base of Born in Roma but this is more citrus and this one's more black currant kind of fresh and fruity and this one's more fresh and like citrus. I'm happy to have both and I actually prefer the freshness of this one but I, I like both. They're both beautiful easy grab perfumes in my collection so this is what the bottle looks like up close. This is the men's. I think Dennis will like it. I don't know if he's going to like the dry down. It does get a little sweet. Um, and the dry down, which he's not used to. But if he doesn't take it, I will. <laughs> I'm going to be quite honest. Yeah, this is really beautiful. And then I did pick up a Jean-Paul Gaultier's La Belle. And this is Le Parfum. This is like the more intense version. And they make it so hard to come out. Like, and this is what this beauty looks like. Now, I knew I was going to like this one because honestly, I like the original. And this is another one where it smells very much like the original. But Dennis actually is okay with this one. He had mentioned something about, oh, you're wearing something different. And I'm like, yeah, why? Do you like it? And he goes, yeah, it's okay, which means he, he likes it. So he did notice it, and he and he did say it was good. So I'm going to say it's the vetiver. Even though this one lists vetiver, I'm going to say it's the vetiver in the original because it is more harsh in that one. But I love the original. I also really love this one. So this one is going to be like the darker, more nighttime scent i don't mind wearing la belle like at night in the summer I, I wore her and i wore her in florida fall i don't mind she's more juicy fruity pear this one's definitely going to be more nighttime and cooler weather but they smell very similar there's just slight differences that one's more fresh um, it's more of a juicy fruity pear and this one to me is a little more spicy. Like I do get a spiciness in the opening to this one. Let's go ahead and spray this. Yeah, I get a spiciness in this one. It's sweet. These perfumes, the Jean-Paul Gaultier perfumes, I think these perfumes are supposed to be fun, let your hair down, kind of raunchy, kind of sex in a bottle. If you're looking for a classy scent, I would not look to these bottles, maybe Classique. I haven't tried that one. But when it comes to this and the Scandals with the legs up in the air, I find them to be more fun perfumes. Like the bottles are representations of the perfume. So I would never say that any of these, the original or this one, is elegant or refined. I did see a comment where someone say that they're disgusting, they're not elegant, they're not refined. And I wouldn't say they're disgusting, but they are certainly not elegant or refined. These to me are more loud, more fun, more playful, sex kitten, get you into bed <laughs> kind of sense. So this one definitely is out to play. She's the cougar. She is the more spicy. She's out to get you. Something just came in the mail and we're gonna go through it. We're going to open it here on camera. Oh my goodness. This is beautiful. There's like this little dust bag probably so you could put it in. And then, ooh, my samples came in this bag. So they sent me Eden Rock. This is their new perfume and I was super intrigued. This is supposed to be like their kind of beachy summer scent. Ooh, that smells good from the bottle. Ooh, very light, beachy. So, came with the same little pillow. So we'll start collecting these little pillows. <laughs> I got other samples too. Let's see. I got Jasmine. 
And another mini. I wanted the little Joy mini to add to my mini collection. Oh my goodness, you guys. How adorable is that? And I did get the Eden Rock spray. So I thought that was a nice way to try it as well. Here she is. I know the popular one was um, Feb Delis Delicious, but I felt like I wasn't gonna like that one because I'm not into that. I don't know. I do wanna sample it, but I don't think I'm gonna like it the way everyone else likes it. I almost blind bought Gris Dior because I kinda had a feeling I was gonna like it just looking at the reviews and just seeing all the, like, the notes and everything. Oh my goodness, this is beautiful. I was gonna get the smaller bottle. I do wish they did like 50 mils of, of these. Oh, this is, this is stunning. But this is the kind of perfume that's like signature scent worthy. So I knew I wanted a bigger bottle. And there is one that I'm gonna pick up blindly because I, I feel like it's gonna be a success. I also love the name of the bottle. I love the juice, and that is Lucky. So I am going to be getting that one maybe next month. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, yeah. I'm, I'm glad I tested out the little one first, but I, I kind of knew when I saw the, the notes that this was going to be one that I was going to enjoy. So I'm really happy with this one. And again, that is Gris Dior. Okay, so this last one. I kind of wanted to give this one its own little spotlight. This is a small indie niche uh, perfumer. He works out of his apartment and does more of like vintage French style perfumes. And I'm sure you've heard of him if you follow like Sarah Mays or Tomalise. They've all talked about him, but that is Melig Perfumes. And I was super shocked to receive this box. He has sent me like samples, but when he told me he wanted me to try his new Baroness perfume, I thought I was getting another sample and when I saw this adorable box which says this simple wooden box contains a handcrafted perfume made with the finest materials I was kind of floored because he ain't cheap <laughs> his bottles are pretty up there they're niche they're high quality and they're handcrafted so this is what his bottle looks like I mean the attention to detail this last perfume is going to be for my vintage perfume lovers the Shalimars the people who love Chanel number no. five that's who's gonna really appreciate Melig perfumes now he is starting to uh, venture out into more modern perfumes he did say that he's working on one that he wants me to try out but right now he does enjoy more of the old French style vintage perfumery um, things from his past his perfumes always invoke like memories of my past because I did grow up smelling perfumes like this. When he told me that this was animalic, an animalic and me, we don't we don't go well. <laughs> Especially if it's a little too like barn barnyard. And he did say that it was a little bit more like sweaty and musky and it made me a little nervous. Well, let me get a card because when you wear this, you're gonna be committing to it all day. So so this does open up a little animalic in the beginning. But then the bergamot comes through. And the bergamot in here is unlike any bergamot in any perfumes. It's very sharp and bright and very uplifting. And almost comes off aldehydic to me. Like I asked him, are there aldehydes in here? He said no, but I got like Chanel number no. five vibes from this, but more bright. And he said no. It's, it's probably the bergamot. So it opens a very clean, soapy, fresh. But don't think soapy like shampoo. Think of like old, beautiful, like French vintage soaps like that. I will say that to my nose, this leans a little bit more feminine. His scents tend to be very unisex. Um, some of them lean a little bit more masculine, but this one to me leans feminine. On me, it opened up very Again, kind of soapy, animalic. The animalic turned more carnal than it did like barnyard on me. And then the musk started to come through and it got very powdery. 
let's say you've taken a shower and you go out in the sun and you know you kind of have like a little bit of sweat from being out in the sun but it kind of amplifies the soap on your skin that's what this kind of started to smell like on me and this is a night out i can almost imagine wearing this if you're in new york and going to like a show that is what i would wear this to you're going to a show and maybe you're going to have a nice elegant dinner afterwards with some wine some tapas that is where i would wear this to this isn't something you're going to wear around the house it's not something you're going to wear running errands this is an elegant nice night out very pretty and something you have to appreciate scents from the past like Shalimar and Chanel to appreciate this. This isn't going to be for everyone. But if you're into vintage or French style perfumery, I would say order a sample pack. He does offer samples of his perfumes and this one is, is beautiful. It's very elegant, classy, and sophisticated. So again, that is Baroness by Melig Perfumes. So that is my haul, pretty large. I'm really excited to follow all of these up in more detail that's going to be coming up right after my room tour. I'm gonna to be jumping right into it and I'm gonna probably be doing again three perfumes, so a total of six perfumes per video where I'll be going over this or that. But let me know in the comments below, have you guys tried any of these perfumes? What are your thoughts on them? But that will do it for today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye guys.